Welcome everybody, my name is Michael or Kuber, and today we're discussing about January 20th. It is a very important day for the entire globe. Everybody's watching the inauguration, so let's discuss what that means for cryptocurrency. Despite which side you may be from, maybe you don't even care about politics, and in my opinion, politics is mainly BS because unless you're a multi-billionaire or multi-millionaire who's heavily invested into some stocks or cryptocurrencies, technically cryptocurrencies might be affected by this, but they're probably not, and here's why we're going to discuss later in this video. If you're directly invested into something that's going to be affected by this change or any presidential election or anything revolving around politics or war or anything related, then you should probably care. But the average person who's watching this video, it, it won't affect you. It won't really change what's going on in your day-to-day -day life. A lot of people get really heated about this topic. I don't want to start any political discussions in the comment section below. We're doing this video because it's important for cryptocurrency. So I wanted to first of all say thank you to Donald J. Trump for being the president, the 45th president, and for serving our nation. And I wish good luck to the 46th sixth president, Joseph R. Biden. Regardless of whoever is going to be in the next administration, we have to realize this. We're all Americans. We're all here. Well, unless you're not an American, well, then hi, you're just viewing it from the outside what's going on. Some people might be chaos. We're all citizens of this world and let's stay united. We're here for a certain mission. We're here to revolutionize cryptocurrency. All right, now we're probably here just to make some money off of cryptocurrency and because we're very passionate about crypto. But the number one thing is a stable economy. Regardless of what happens this year, hopefully it's going to be okay and better than last year. Hopefully these lockdowns go away and the economy goes into a place that we've never been to. There's more millionaires and billionaires that are getting rich through stocks and cryptocurrency. So hopefully we're able to reach 5,000 billionaires in the near future. And with that, let's roll the intro and let's discuss. So what does the 46th president, Joseph R. Biden, as right now he is officially the president, so what is his policy going to be regards to cryptocurrency? This is the timeless question every four years, every presidential cycle, depending on whether it's a Republican or a Democratic candidate. First of all, economists look at how will this affect the economy. If it's going to be Republican, it's probably going to lean for certain things. So for example, if Trump won, which stocks would you pick? Anything to do with, for example, defense, energy and oil and gas, pharmaceuticals, managed care, banks, fintech, technology stocks, 5G infrastructure. While if Biden won, what, what kind of stocks would you be looking at? Utilities, medical equipment manufacturers, sustainability infrastructure, healthcare, green energy, consumer, and Chinese tech stocks. So some examples, if Trump won, Lockheed Martin would definitely be a defense and military type producer. So that's awesome. Certain stocks like Walmart and Amazon and Facebook, these stocks would most likely benefit from both sides winning since they're already large companies. And it would depend on which policies, even if Trump wouldn't agree with certain social media companies such as Facebook and Twitter, technically because of certain policies that he already enacted and he would continue to enact unless he became president and the whole censorship thing happened and probably wouldn't go, it wouldn't go down so well for Twitter. But let's just say that didn't happen. These companies are already so large that due to certain policies being in place, it affects all of these social media companies, all of these fintech companies, all of these bank companies, whether they have lower taxes to pay, whether they have more freedom, whether they have tariffs, whether they have any negative or positive effects. So Trump would be ExxonMobil, anything energy, oil, gas, these traditional mm, Republican type stocks. Well, Biden would have some interesting canopy growth stocks, MMJ stuff, but also infrastructure such as Caterpillar. Biden's plan included a modern and sustainable infrastructure and a clean energy future. So same thing goes with cryptocurrencies, except it's a little bit more difficult since it's newer, although probably in the future, since it will be a larger industry, it's going to become actually stable. Institutional investors are actually recognizing that it is indeed an asset, at least in certain countries, we're still kind of getting there. It might be in its own class, which we've discussed in previous videos. And what's interesting in both cases, since both presidents are in their 70s, and these are people who really didn't grow up with this technology. Just look at Warren Buffett. He's one of the greatest investors in the world, and he doesn't really know about cryptocurrency. He chooses to ignore that because it just doesn't make sense for him. He's already so invested in stocks. Trump is invested in stocks and real estate. Biden is also invested in stocks. These are multimillionaires and multi-billionaires, but they have decades and decades of experience of getting their income from a complete completely different source. And because they're involved in politics, they had to understand, all right, here is what cryptocurrency is, but it's a basic understanding. There's people usually in their cabinets, there's people who are preparing underneath in their administration. Some people are pro-cryptocurrency, some people are against cryptocurrency. 
So now with Biden being confirmed president, we have to look at not what Biden thinks about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, because even if they have their own opinion on it, usually if they want to veto anything or if they want to enact a bill, it has to pass through the House and the Senate. So if there's a particular senator who doesn't really like cryptocurrency or anybody that has anything to do with the financial sector, or let's say Biden's VP, or for example, a key player such as the Treasury Secretary, what do they think about cryptocurrency? Will Will they be pro? If so, will they help with regulation in such a way that it doesn't affect cryptocurrency in a negative light? Regulation is a very delicate matter that it can make or break certain companies that are based in the U.S. right now. That's why a lot of companies are fleeing from the U.S. They don't want that regulation, and especially for New York City. So let's discuss a few of the people in Biden's administration and what this means for cryptocurrency. In simple terms, probably for both presidents, there's nothing that's like, yes, this president and this administration is 100% pro-crypto. It really wouldn't have that much of an effect. The only effect here is hopes and rumors. One of the first key economic positions filled by Biden is that of Treasury Secretary, with the president-elect picking former Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen. Now, she is not known particularly well for her cryptocurrency stances. In October 2018, she said of Bitcoin, I will just say outright, I'm not a fan. And a year before that, she said it's a highly speculative asset, while noting that the Fed played little role in cryptocurrencies. As Treasury Secretary, Yellen would be in charge of formulating the administration's fiscal policy, having a much greater effect on cryptocurrencies. In her January 2020 confirmation hearing, she described crypto as being of particular concern for its role in facilitating criminal activity. So this is not a good thing for cryptocurrency, especially because of her high senior position. She said, I think many are used, at least in a transaction sense, mainly for illicit finance which is totally wrong, but all right. And I think we really need to examine ways in which we can curtail their use and make sure that anti-money laundering doesn't occur through these channels. So Biden chose an SEC head, Gary Gensler. He's the former chairman of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission under Obama. And he's going to be looking oversight on Wall Street. So he's got a wealth of experience on blockchain, and he's definitely pro-cryptocurrency. He taught, actually, a course about cryptocurrency at MIT, and he described Bitcoin as a catalyst for change. So for every negative person that's against cryptocurrency, there might be someone else who's able to stop all of these negative laws coming into effect. Although every single politician, even if they're pro-cryptocurrency, they have to think about what their constituents want. So even if they're personally invested in it, they can't just outright support it without making sure it sounds sounds politically good. They want to make sure that there's a way to regulate it. They want to make sure that there is some policies to stop AML, money laundering, and anything to do with criminal activity. A new administration may fill some of the many open positions at various regulatory agencies which have remained vacant for most of the current administration. This may be a dual-edged sword, though. On one hand, this may facilitate enforcement. However, it may also facilitate policy creation. With more resources, we could see more no-action relief and more approval of crypto instrument issuances. Biden's proposed tax plan would affect crypto holders earning over $400,000 or more and especially those making $1 million or more. Now, this also affects cryptocurrency companies and exchanges. A lot of people thought, oh, that's okay. I'm not earning over $400,000, but your employer might be. And if your employer has to pay higher taxes, that's going to affect the economy. That's going to affect the local economy, and that's going to affect your job. So with an increase from 37 to 39.6% for short-term crypto capital gains and a total capital gains tax at 39.6% on income over $1 million, plus a repeal of step up in basis for inherited crypto cryptocurrency. What that means is Biden's tax plan is not good for cryptocurrency. So even though Trump was specifically a few years ago against Bitcoin, he was a little bit shy to it. Being a Republican, uh, being a businessman, his proposed tax plans actually helped cryptocurrency and they helped the Dow Jones rise up in stocks and everything. He was very open to the idea. So some analysts note that the Biden administration might be more open to cryptocurrency than the Trump administration, but there's definitely some prominent Democrats that favor regulation more so than the Trump administration. So it's a double-edged sword. They're going to be more hands-on. If there's a certain cryptocurrency company that's becoming too big of a monopoly, they're going to tax it. They're going to destroy it. And that company might eventually move out, such as all these billionaire companies that have already done so. There's also another aspect to look at. Not just the financial aspect, but being protective of the end users of all these social policies. So for example, with Libra from Facebook, Representative Maxine Waters requested that Facebook pause development and employment of Libra until Congress could better understand the implications for them. DeFi and its volatile growth may become targets of future end user investor protection regulation. 
Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, also spoke against corporate-controlled currencies and showed favor for centrally managed money. While her statement is more targeted at stablecoins, I wouldn't be surprised if the representatives from the Democratic Party take a more protective stance and not a hands-off approach. There is also a crypto-cautious lobby. It's part of the Stable Act. And in November 2020, there was a group of six Democratic representatives that criticized out- outgoing acting control of the currency Brian Book's excessive focus on crypto assets and crypto-related financial services. A month later, Representative Waters penned a letter to Biden urging that some crypto-friendly policies adopted by the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, OCC, be rescinded. Your appointed officials at the OCC must also not assume, as their predecessors have, that a law Congress passed over 150 years ago somehow gives them authority to provide a national bank charter to non-bank fintech or payment companies. So in some ways, it's more so the same. Nothing's really changing. There's people who are pro-cryptocurrency. There's people who are against cryptocurrency. Biden himself has never invested in Bitcoin, as at least that we know of, besides his Twitter account getting hacked that one time and saying that he was giving out Bitcoin. And then he made mention to it after the hack, but that was it. That was the only time he really ever mentioned it publicly. Donald Trump was not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, but that was a few years ago. And he was mostly hands-off of crypto, so that was a good thing. There's definitely plenty more important issues and a lot other priorities, so we don't have to worry about anything particularly affecting cryptocurrency. And if something did happen, such as over the past month when the Fed tried to introduce some new laws, people got really upset about them and they beat records for the amount of people who were commenting about it. So that didn't go into action. Also, the VP, Kamala Harris of Biden, has not mentioned anything about cryptocurrency. So all the people who are getting super excited, I wouldn't get so excited just yet. I mean, we're going to see over the next four years what happens. But ultimately, there's other stuff that will impact cryptocurrency, such as these lockdowns, these stimulus packages, taxes and the economic policies that will affect stocks. So that's a better way to know what will happen with Ethereum or Bitcoin, whether it's going to be affected. You have to look at Wall Street. What will be affected? Which companies? If companies are going up or down due to the Biden administration over the next few months, the next 100 days are very important. So then we'll have our answer. So that's today's video. I wish you all a great rest of your day. If you still haven't subscribed yet, check out the new cryptocurrency channel. It's my personal brand name. Link is down in the description as always, and we shall see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.